Hey guys, welcome back. Continuing on with data and statistics, we're going to take a look um, over the next few days, the next few lessons about some of the different graphs um, that we can use. Graphs are simply just visual ways in which we can analyze data. It's a way to display your data um, and kind of tell what's going on here. So today we're going to look at bar graphs. Um, specifically multiple bar graphs, meaning I'm looking at multiple data from multiple different um, places or different things. Um, so let's just quickly review parts of a graph. All your graphs should have a title. This graph's title is Medals Won in the 2006 Winter Olympics. Very self-explanatory. I know exactly what information is on my graph now. That's what it should do. Then you'll notice you have a couple um, different axes. You have a y-axis. You have an x-axis. I need to have labels for each of these. So my y-axis on this one tells me that it's the numbers of number of medals won. So how many medals did they win? The bottom tells me the country. I have it labeled as country, and then you'll see where I have each country labeled. I have the numbers listed. The final thing that they always need is what we call a key, especially if you're doing multiple bar graphs. You need to have a key to let people know what color or what symbol, if you're dealing with black and white, represents a different thing. So here we're talking about medals, so that's three choices. We can have a gold medal, a silver, a silver medal, sorry, I have an issue speaking, or a bronze medal. So we have each of those color-coded. So you'll notice if I look at this, I can look at Germany, I can tell you how many uh, gold medals, how many silver, and how many bronze medals they won. And I can also use this for comparing. I can say, well, let's look at Germany compared to USA. And then I can use those numbers to draw different conclusions. So what we're going to look at is <clears throat> interpreting graphs. Uh, what do we know about graphs and how do we interpret the information that we find on them? So the first thing I'm going to do uh, with this one, it's a little complex, but just follow along and you'll kind of see how we read this. What we're going to do, um, and I'm going to be flipping back and forth between these two boards, okay, I'll be pulling them back and forth. I want to figure out the total number of medals each uh, country won, and then we're going to calculate what percent is gold. This is good. We're reviewing some other um, older concepts as well. So first, um, total metals. Well, let's just look at interpreting our graph. So here you'll notice my scale, it goes up by twos. So this gold medal ends in between 10 and 12, so that means there were 11 gold, if you want to write that down. This comes right up to the line, so there were 12 silver. This comes right up to the line, so there were 6 bronze. So altogether, how many medals did they win? Well, that simply means let's add them together. So 11 and 12 is 23, plus 6 is 29. So let's fill that in over here. Germany had a total of 29 medals. All right. um, how many did USA have? So again, let's take a look at what we've got here. Gold, they had 9. Bra uh, silver, they also had 9. Bronze, they had 7. So how many total medals did USA wind up with? 9 plus 9 is 18, plus 7 is 25. 25 medals. Uh, Austria. Austria also had 9 gold medals. Um, and then you'll notice they had 7 silver, 7 bronze. So all together, we'll add that together. Uh, 7 and 7 is 14, plus 9 is 23 medals. All right, South Korea. South Korea had six gold, three silver, two bronze. So all together, what is that? That is 11 total. South Korea has 11 medals. Finally, we'll take a look at Sweden. Sweden has seven gold, two silver, five bronze. So all together, they had 14. Sorry, get my board together here. 14 medals altogether. So if I want to calculate what percentage of their medals were, were gold, I'm going to refer back to this, but I'm going to write a proportion to solve for my percentage. So um, if we look, Germany had 11 gold out of a total of 29 medals. Okay, to solve for a percentage, I'm going to put X over 100. So remember, percentages are always out of 100. So we'll set each of those up, and then we'll solve. Um, USA had nine gold. Nine gold out of 25 total is equal to percent over 100. Austria had 23 total. Nine of those were gold. South 
South Korea had six gold, Sweden had seven gold. So South Korea had six gold out of 11, Sweden had seven gold out of 14. We're then going to solve for our percentage. <coughs> so again here, just remember, we're going to cross multiply um, and then divide. So uh, I'm not gonna do it underneath because I don't have enough room. Uh, to 1100. I'm going to use my calculator to do this division. Um, we're just going to round to the nearest percent. 1100 divided by 29 gives me about 38%. So we could say 38% of Germany's metals were gold metals. Um, here, cross multiply 25x is equal to 900. So when we divide, we wind up with 36%. 36% of the U.S.'s uh, metals were gold. So if you look, they were actually pretty close percentage-wise in the number of golds we got. Um, 23x is equal to 900. Here we get 39%. So percentage-wise, actually Austria, they didn't get as many medals, but they had a greater percentage of their medals that were gold. Um, 11x is equal to 6. Here I get 55, if I round, 55% of their medals were gold. And here, 14x is equal to 700. 50% of their medals were gold. So of the medals they won, that percentage is there. So that's one thing that you can use a graph for. But really, you just need to be able to look at this, um, ooh, as I drop it, and understand how is it I'm reading it, knowing how your numbers line up and what each thing um, means. And as long as it's clearly labeled, that should be fairly obvious to look at and interpret these things. All right, we'll take a look at one more here. Um, this is a term that I'm going to give you. What I've drawn here is what we call a broken graph. Now, these are okay to use. The advantage is they take up less space because you'll notice I started the scale at 40 instead of starting it at zero like you normally would. The other thing, though, you have to be aware of is sometimes people will use a broken graph to give you misleading data. It'll look more impressive than it really is, or it'll look like it's not as impressive um, because it looks like a smaller amount of, of data or it looks like smaller numbers. So you always want to be careful with a broken graph. If you're going to use one, you need to let people know it's broken. I'm doing this to conserve space, all right? Um, and the other thing when it's a broken graph is you'll usually see these little crinkly lines down here. That's just so you know. It's to indicate this is a broken graph. I didn't start at zero like I should have because if we have an interval, ideally we should start at zero, work our way up by fives or whatever interval we picked. Whereas I just picked a number to start at and went from there to conserve space, okay? So again, you'll notice we have a title. This was Home Run Leaders. Um, here on my y-axis, I have the year. This is for the years 2003 up through 2007. And then down here, I have the number of home runs in the season. Um, and then we're looking at our National League leaders versus our American League leaders. So here's our key telling me what the different colors on my graph represent. So this would be one where we're just going to look at this and see what we can interpret based on the questions that I ask here. Uh, so for what year did the leaders in both leagues hit the same number of home runs? So what am I looking for? I'm looking for where my two colors are exactly the same. And this again, this is easier to do with a graph than numbers because you can see where these two end at exactly the same point. So it's pretty quick to look at and say, well, in 2003, both American League and National League uh, top hitters hit the same number of home runs. They were fairly even that year. This is, a, this is the benefit of a graph. You can visually look at it, and you can pick things up really quick instead of having to analyze different numbers. Um, for the year shown, in which year and in which league did the league leader hit the greatest number of home runs? So where is the longest bar, basically, is what it's asking. The greatest number of home runs would be the longest bar. This bar right here is the longest bar. It's brown, which means it was a National League hitter in 2006 who hit the most home runs. Okay, 
So again, just simple questions that you can visually look at and you can interpret in the graph when asked. Uh, which league's leader had the greatest number of home runs most often? So this is more where you're going to have to compare the two different bars each year. So in year 2007, it was the American League you had more. 2006, the National League hit more. In 2005, it was the National League. 2004, it was the National League. Here, it was tied, so we're kind of going to ignore that one because that doesn't really help us in our data. So, based on that, three of the years, it was a National League hitter who was ahead um, for the number of home runs, so the National League would be our answer there. National League, uh, league leader had more home runs than the American League leader three out of the five years that we have listed. All right? So those are just ways that you can look at a graph and you can interpret a graph. Um, I'm not going to put a whole lot more up here because um, graphs can take a while to, to draw, but um, you should be able to look at one and understand what each part of it means. Um, again, if anything confused you, go back and rewatch the video. You can ask me questions in class or um, in the comment section or email me. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow. You have a great night.